Thursday. I cast. Man, what a good time. And a bunch of new tackle right now at Tackle Shop Live. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Looky here, man. Keith Goss. What's up, bitches? Hey, 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 hey. bitches be jigging. <laughs> man, how's everybody doing? Joseph, what's happening? James Hawk. Yep. Mark, how you doing, buddy? Logan. John Cop. How are you, John? Jerry Ray. Shri oh, hey, how you doing, buddy? Ben the yeah. Buck Hunter's here oh, in the he's, house. He's getting ready. <laughs> Get ready for the crap beat down tomorrow, baby. That's right. That's right, man. Andre. Andre's in the house. L Logan Schallenberg. I, look, more compliments on these hats, Mikey. I know, Shake man. and bake, baby. Uh, Shake and bake. It. Yeah, absolutely. That's me and Corbin's design here on our hats, so we love them. Yep. And uh, we're wearing them. They're sporting those tonight. Um, yeah, so how's everybody doing, man? Mike, not digging the Deidre, beard. how are you doing, man? Oh, man. Not digging the beard. Hey, come, Shots fired, come bro. Come on, man. How can you not like this? Nice and nice and tight. Uh, nice and tight. I got a little I got a little scruff going on. <laughs> About four days without shaving, you know. Man, how's everybody doing? Thanks so much for stopping by Tackle Shop Live again. We appreciate it. Uh, man, we are two solo. <laughs> we're, we're, what are we deuces in the house? We're missing somebody. <sighs> George is a wall. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait. George, George. <laughs> no George today. It's, it's just me and Corbin. George is down at uh, ICAST um, 2021. Uh, we didn't have one last year, so uh, I was supposed to be with him, but somebody's got to hold the house down. And so Corbin stepped in. You're helping us out all, That's what all we weekend. Do, bro. Yeah, That's what I appreciate we do, it, man. pal. Appreciate that very much. Having a good time. Yeah, um, making it happen here at the uh, headquarters. But George has been really busy. He's he's uh, you know, ICAST is a very, very important part of our business. It's it's the industry show. As as most of you guys know, you've heard about it. Everybody wants to go. Everybody. Every time I mention ICAST, everybody says like, man, I want to go to that so bad. I know. And and it's uh, it's it's an industry only uh, event. It's like it's like for us, it's like you guys going to like Suffern show or or some kind of retail show where you're looking at all kinds of cool tackle. We do the same thing, uh, you know, in the industry, we go down, we, we, we meet and greet all the, um, you know, all the industry guys, everybody who's, everybody is there. You get to talk to them face to face, you know, put a face with a name type of stuff. And it really opens up all the events and, and stuff that we do here at the shop. You know, it, right, it, it, right. It, we make all of our connections there and, uh, and it, and it also helps us with getting the tackle and getting tackle and keeping our shops stocked the way we do. Even in tough times like this, we have a pretty outstanding selection. Yeah, you know, very uh, compared to a lot of lot of places. Yep. And that's all done down there at ICAST. And George is down there uh, rubbing elbows with all the all the big wigs. And as he does best, <laughs> you know, he's the governor. You know, he he Dude, I mean, he he I... like walks in there and everybody knows him. Oh, bro, you know what they do? They just they meet him at one place and go from there. Yeah, Corona Cigar Bar. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, and, and and follow it, bro. Oh, uh, you know, you know, I mean, you know that's what he's doing. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Um, but he's uh, he's he's working hard, and he's been sending me all kinds of cool pictures of all the neat uh, tackle that we've been uh, checking out. You know, there's a million releases, um, but for us, uh, let's see if I can find him here. <laughs> uh, let's see it would be fred knopp asked what are we selling out of george's tackle box tonight <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we, we we definitely uh we definitely um let's see here george but he has some cool stuff he has he has been looking at uh you know spro he was with spro he's with uh strike king today and and he, and you know that, that new chick magnet I don't know if you guys can I'm, see these. Dude, pictures. I'm right here. I'm right here, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, brother. I'm right, right here. 
right? But uh, he's sending me all these neat pictures uh, that that he's you know, stuff we're interested in, stuff we're checking out. So there's a, a boatload of new stuff coming out. I don't, I don't know. Everybody's everybody's like bent out of shape because you know they can't supply what they have now. Why are they releasing all this stuff? That's a question. I, I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, but we're, I was we're, gonna wait. We're man. getting that discussion all the time. But if you're not moving forward with new product every year and trying to bring it to the market and trying to expand the sport, well, it, it, you know it can go stale very quickly. Yeah. And um, so these companies they have to do it they have to bring you know new stuff they have to it's even though it's it's a really bad time to get tackle and manufacture tackle they have to put this stuff in line and this stuff's been like really been being worked on three years ago yeah so yeah. it's not like it's stuff that they just thought about like right now and they're going to do it Th these guys have been working on this stuff three four five years ahead of time they test it they give it to their pros the pros make tweaks it all goes through the line so it's not really it's not really like last minute you know throw it on top of the pile it's it's been well thought out and uh the manufacturing plan has already been in 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 uh you know going on so yeah they've already you know stuff's already been going into that plan and and the, and the manufacturers already know about that and, and the factories and stuff already have it all planned in there so and, and you can only hold research and development for so long from a business standpoint before you start losing money so sure. you can't just sit and have something waiting to come to the market and hold it forever so yeah, and I know there's definitely, uh, you know, some, we'll just say animosity, especially with the uh, Berkeley big flatworm coming out. Uh, oh, yeah. With people saying, well, they can't even produce the regular one. Exa know? Exactly. So I, I, and, it, and it's interesting, you know, you hear all sides of it and, uh, you know. Well, just, and, well you, you've, you've been working in here the last couple of days. So, you, yep. you know, and, and it's funny because, you know, our customers are very, very smart people. I mean, yes. we have the best customers ever. Absolutely. In the, in the whole industry is, is the customers that shop here at uh, Susquehanna Fish and Tackle. You guys are very, very educated. So a lot of the stuff you you are you're no, you know about it before we even talk about it because right. you've seen it, you're researching it already, you're checking it out. So when you come in, you know, we have customers that come in the shop and they're saying, man, how, why are they bringing this stuff out when they don't have it? Well, it's, it's, that's the problem. You it, mean like the OG slim too? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You know, but really the flatworm thing is really, really a problem. Yeah. And, um, but uh, you know, they got to do it. It's already in the market. It's already in the plan. It's already, it's already going forward. Uh, Logan's saying about the tattoo limited SV limited, man, that is going to be a phenomenal reel. We have a boatload of them coming into the shop. It's not going to be till later, later on, you know, um, that's the other thing. A lot of this stuff is, is released at ICAST and, and not all of it ships. It will ship between now and January. So, uh, throughout the year, you know, throughout the rest of this year, you'll see, you'll, you'll see stuff coming in here, but it doesn't happen all at once. So, uh, patience is going to be, well, you know, a virtue. Well, and that assumes there's no COVID outbreak, no variant in in the warehouses and the manufacturing and all that stuff too. I mean, yeah, you know, just because they say it's going to be available this day, there's a lot of external circumstances that are out of you know your guys' control, the manufacturer's control, and you know, it's kind of like, hey, yeah, just, it, yeah, it's a tentative date. So yeah, absolutely, Logan, don't worry about it. We have a boatload of those things coming in. George placed a humongous order with them. A lot more than I would have bought, but I guess he knows <laughs> something that, that I don't. But <laughs> you went to Japan. He spent the money, brother. <laughs> he, did. He, he definitely did. So, um, you know, so we got all that stuff coming in. But, but, um, you know, speaking of that stuff, the some new product that's being released, we are uh, going to get some new release products tomorrow. And, um, you know, one of the big things that we're going to we're going to talk about tonight is is some of the new tackle that's coming in and the stuff that's going to be loaded here and it's being loaded and stuff that got loaded on here in the last couple of a uh, couple of days. Yeah. So um, that's going to be under our tackle talks uh, uh, section. We're going to talk about that a good bit. Um, but uh, let's start out with some. Uh, let's start out the show with some tournament talk. And tournament uh, talk. man, it's taco time. Taco time. <laughs> Yeah, man, was that ever a great tournament up on Lake, Lake or up on the St. Lawrence River? Uh, I mean, that was just it was a fun tournament to watch um, as fans, as we all are. It was a great yeah. time. It was it was a, it was a great show to uh, to watch to see everything unfold and how these guys were catching these fish. It was just really a cool 
cool event. Yeah, it was really cool. And what's what's interesting is once again the lake played huge. I mean, oh yeah, you know. So they always talk about the St. Lawrence River. I wonder when they're just going to start talking about Lake Ontario. You know, <laughs> I mean, because that's if you're going to win, that's where you got to be. But well, uh, you well know. they they did they, they they just released the um the uh, Elite Series schedule for next year. Yep. And they're going to go to St. Lawrence again, but they're going out of Clayton. So oh. what that says is there's going to be a lot of lake play next year. I bet. You know, they're going to they're going to probably, uh, you know, the, the majority of the field as long as it's not too windy, you're going to be fishing the lake. <laughs> and Canada opens as we found out yesterday in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, so uh, the, uh, uh, all Canada will come into play too. I, I mean, I just think that next year the Johnson brothers are going to have a pretty good uh, yeah. <laughs> good idea where to go if, yeah. if Canada's open yeah. and Gussie. So, so Taco uh, Ito, yeah. uh, congratulations yep. to him winning winning the tournament. It was a very emotional weigh in. Uh, I, I hope you guys got the chance to see it because it really it was really a cool moment for him and for the sport, uh, showing the emotion that's involved with uh, these these pro anglers. So it was really pretty cool. But he um, he took it home, man. He had 90, 90 pounds. Um, you know, uh, last day he had a twenty six pound bag. <laughs> I mean, two sixes. I know. I mean, that's using that's, some kind of a shrimp. I mean, yeah, yeah. He was using I, I some crazy, know. crazy gulp. type of shrimp. Probably gulp. Um, but um, he, he, um, he was just very, very good on the camera. I mean, I loved it when he was fishing the last day. He was out uh, in front of Shimo Bay, and on, on uh, he, and what he said was when he pulled up, he thought there was something wrong with his graph because. <laughs> It was showing like a false bottom, and oh, he God. and he thought there was something wrong with his graphs, and and um, he tossed out, of course, and all those smallmouth instead of being on the bottom like day one and two and three, they they suspended up a little bit, and he threw out and he caught an instantly five pounder, and he and he just caught five pounder after five pounder. He said there was probably a hundred five pounders in this school of fish. That's crazy. I mean, that's an unbelievable deal. Uh, that's a, I mean, could you imagine stumbling on something like that just to have fun, fun with them? Things. I know you wear yourself out. Yeah. And you know, what was funny is he said that he, when he made that, you know, adjustment to go fish the other area yeah. on day three, it was because the bigger gobies were holding out there and yeah, they were hanging out there and he went to chase the bigger prey. So, yeah. So Dan Sauer had taco on his, uh, fantasy team. That was a good pick, Dan. How you doing, yeah. buddy? Good. Good to see you. Ke Kevin Carpenter. He's been watching it, uh, pretty regular. And, um, Ed Rosnowski uh, was there. I saw yeah. that on Facebook too. Yeah, so a lot of guys, a lot of guys watching. Um, um, but but you know what what really got me was, you know he he these schools of fish and how he had to move and posi reposition. He said the wind changed directions and pushed. He felt like he pushed the fish out of the of uh, Shimo Bay and they stacked up out in the mouth of that thing. Really? Yeah. And wow. and um. He he just came across that school and it was just a magical moment for him. He only had uh, he only fished for two and a half hours on the last day. He had a two hour run down, two and a half hours of fishing. He wanted to make sure he got back in time, so he t turned around, ran back the two and a half hours, and of course got back with his fish. And he did fish maintenance all the way back. Wow! He didn't want to lose anything on the way back, so he would stop and and check his fish and did maintenance on his fish on the way back. So uh, that was very smart of him to do that. And I guess with uh, 26 pounds here in live. Well, <laughs> you can afford to leave a little early. Yeah, for real, for <laughs> and run, real, and run up. But he was uh, the, the last day of the tournament. Uh, well, the whole tournament, he was fishing drop shots, and um, you know he's fishing some Japanese baits that don't even ask for him because the, you're just not going to get them. It's it's all that Norris Japanese stuff. He, he did do some Nico rigging too. I saw. He, yeah, he did some Nico rigging. Yep. The shrimp bait that he was using. Um, it. I think they said that the. One bag was like twenty dollars. Well, I mean, Mike, the viewers can't quite see. I'm just trying to figure out: <laughs> is this the taco sauce? Yeah. <laughs> is this it? I mean, we got to talk about this mysterious sauce. Man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, he marinated his baits in in those little, and it's a it's a picture that's on bass. He marinated his baits with a concoction. I guess he came up with this a secret sauce, basically. Um, that he marinated his baits in, and he felt like it was a the, the reason for Some, them eating that thing. Somebody like that. said it was like tuna. Like I heard it was like tuna well, or something. I mean, you know, I'm gonna go get me a can of whiskers and marinate my tubes in it for a next lot year. of the Japanese baits that we carry here in the shop. They're very much loaded with a squid scent, 
Yeah. So that's a big scent for for the uh, in the Japanese uh, manufacturing process over there. So it was probably some kind of squid scent and and whatever else. I mean, who knows what what he put in it? But I thought it was pretty neat that he that he had his own secret sauce. But speaking of sauces, uh, a big shout out to Scott Goldsmith. I don't know if Scott's watching. He usually does, but um, he manufactures uh, you know sauces and things for people who have great, you know, an idea or a home yeah. recipe and yeah. his, his business would bottle it and, and, and get it ready for, for sale. And so he always brings me in these sauces, but, uh, and today he brought three of them in and I don't know if guys are, if you guys are, uh, hot sauce kind of sores or not, but I, we are Corbin has like <laughs> the biggest hot sauce selection I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, all, I mean, <laughs> I don't. Dave Schindler might have a bigger one. But I think Dave Schindler I does. Mean, but yours is very impressive. Is, his is, uh, we'll just say, very seasoned. Yeah. Maybe you know, gets better with age or something. I guess I don't. Cluster know. Cluster said, well, "I'll just catch more catfish then." <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, so we had this one today. We had uh, Corbin cooked up some chicken breasts for lunch today, which they were awesome. Yeah. Too, we, by the way fantastic and one of them that he that uh, scott dropped off was called rocky's bacon hot sauce um right there if you can see that um i am telling you it's not so much a bacon flavor as it is just a quality this is this it's not smoking hot not like burn your face off hot but just a nice quality hot sauce with a with, i'm telling you the flavor on this thing is off the charts it was fantastic rocky's bacon hot sauce i mean yeah I don't know if you guys have any any uh Andre oh, this is better than the Old Bay hot sauce but the, the Old Bay hot sauce is pretty good. It is. But it but it's it very is. salty. Yeah, it's salty. You got to watch salty. yourself with that. Yeah. yeah. This stuff here you could drink it. Take a shot, eat a piece of chicken, it's right on. It's right on. It's right on tilt, don't you think? Are you going to do it on live? No, I'm not going to do it on live. I was just asking. And then the other one that he brought me that's what it was it was again cuz we had chicken today. We tried them. We tried everything today cuz everything goes with chicken. Right. And today um, we, we did uh, <laughs> Mike's hot honey. Yeah. Now this is like a honey based hot sauce with chili peppers with says, chili peppers yeah. in it. And I'm telling you, man, it, it it's 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 very spicy, but with that with that sweet tang to it, this was fantastic. Scott said that I would like another one better, but this one, I, I don't know, man. I, I this is fantastic. It's hot. I mean, it's hot. You you're gonna you're gonna know you're eating something hot. But it is phenomenal right there. That was a good one. And then um, <laughs> and this one here, Saucy Lips. This one's hot. This hot. mother here is a ghost pepper uh, a sauce that, I, I mean, it is it is hot, but it's pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. We, we didn't, this was filled up to the top. So we we had some of it and uh, we were we were we were tearing up back air and sneezing and <laughs> blowing our nose and and uh, we just kept eating it. It was it was it's really really good. So uh, Corbin, Corbin, uh, yeah, Chef Corbin, I, uh, Paul Keener, Chef yeah, Corbin, the uh, best wings on the river. Absolutely. I mean that freaking guy. He knows how to cook, and he cooked the greatest chicken. But my I think my all time just all around all favorite. And this is the one that Scott's been bringing me regular. Is this one right here? This is uh, this is uh, 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 Sierra's uh, Verdes salsa sauce it's uh you know it's and, and, and you know what it has in it Av avocados oh i knew you i knew i didn't say it because you i knew sneaky dog yeah you. i knew it, it was you anything sneaky. kind of green vegetable and corbin is he's oh, anything green i can't eat i, don't, I, said, I, don't like I green. said you gotta try this but Ver, verde and me don't go but go you long. but you've been you were chewing yeah. this stuff right yeah, here that's man it was like a salsa it's not a hot it is sauce. It's, it's, it's like a salsa it's a, just a good tangy hot salsa so maybe Taco had a uh, put a little bit of these sauces in his baits and uh, did something because it was absolutely incredible. Yep. Um, but I, I loved it when he was landing the fish, Corbin, and he was he said um, something about Taco's boat is Disneyland for smallmouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was I lost yeah. it, man. He's he like. He just went on and on, and he was like, "Don't jump, don't jump," and then it was like, "Don't go to bottom, don't go to bottom." Zero Brussels, very bad. <laughs> so yeah. it was, uh, it was a fun, fun tournament to watch. Uh, but you know, drop shot and you know, with the light line that those guys, he was using eight pound leader on an eight pound fluorocarbon, an eight pound or uh, eight, eight pound, pound braid. braid. But eight pound braid is, if as you guys know, is like four pound test diameter, and or, with or those. Less. Huh? Might be like two or it, one. It, it might. It, it's super thin, but it's it's 
you know, so the zebra mussels are very much a problem. If, if the fish gets down and starts running down through there and catches onto a rock, it's gone, you know, so they do break off a few fish, Yeah. but he fished clean and he, and he won a tournament. Um, and then some of the other baits that were hot in that, in that deal, um, was the Ned rig. Of course, you saw a million ways of rigging a Ned rig on there. Uh, just goes to show the Ned rig catches smallmouth. Yes. Period. And Atkins who got second was using a, of course, a max scent flatworm. Yeah. But you know, it was interesting since he actually had the flatworms to use Mike. Yeah. He was catching them by putting a flatworm on the back of a marabou jig as well. Yeah. You know, instead of using like a Senko sure. or something else. I mean, so he had the max scent marabou well, M &M, baby. And he went with the brown over the black. Marabou. Well, I was going to say the um, marabou jigs, they, they did fish black and they, and he fished brown. And some, some of the guys said that the brown was much better. Yep. Um, I know that uh, the guy who led the first two days, um, Bernie Schultz. Bernie Schultz. He was throwing a, a, a marabou jig mm -mm. quite a bit, and a swim bait. Nope, nope, not not according to Bernie. The one day, yeah. he, he, he get what he was doing, Mike. <laughs> he yes, he was using some of that stuff. But you yeah. know how he caught him on that one spot that he burned all his fish on the second day. He was taking a four inch senko, yeah, cutting it down and fishing it on net head. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. And it, and, and guess what color it was. <laughs> Green pumpkin, watermelon, laminate. <laughs> 912. I'm, exactly. And he's like, I'm cutting this down a little bit just to make it right. He's like, because it's a little bit bigger. He goes, they like that bigger profile. And I'm getting the bigger bites with it. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, he was he, he was he was being a little tricky. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. But he, you know, Bernie, he had a great run at it, you know, and, and he just didn't have enough spots to to go to go to he just burned all his fish up but that happens you yeah. know if you don't if you don't have spots or you, don't, you can't leave your fish to go find fish <laughs> you know that's that's uh <laughs> i wish i wish george was here right now for this oh yeah ed said bernie caught a lot on spinner baits oh yeah remember when george <laughs> was telling the story last week of the golden shiner spinner bait yeah them? yeah that, that's funny yeah george fished with bernie up on lake erie in a turn in a you know elite series tournament last one actually i think it was yep. and uh that's what they were throwing spinner baits but drop shot, of course, was a big player up there, and we all know that. That's that's a big thing. But uh, one of the uh, baits that um, Corey Johnson was fishing was the Hasdong uh, Shad uh, by Mega Bass, um, and I've fished that thing up there many times with um, Ryan Buttermore, who's our Mega Bass representative, the national sales manager for Mega Bass. He is he he's the one that showed me on that. And they fish it on a number four drop shot say. hook. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was putting these hooks up yesterday and I looked yeah. at Mike and I was over in the Eagle Claw Snell section because it was a four hook. I'm <laughs> like, Mike, these aren't ever here because that's a drop shot hook. I'm like, it's a what? Yeah. A size four? Yeah. Well, the idea behind a small drop shot hook for a lot of guys who who don't understand the whole uh concept of nose hook and in what and what those small hooks do. Um, the whole idea is once they get in the mouth. And even on the in the lip of the mouth, yep, it's like a splinter. Okay, it doesn't come out. You know, they don't have anything to have leverage on, and they they can't use the hook to 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 have leverage to throw the hook. So you'll see a lot of guys throwing you know fours and twos and ones, and um, because it's 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 that it's that philosophy where they don't have anything to to use to throw the the hook, and it just sticks in them. Even if you have them just by a little bit. Um, Ryan going to the, to the number four, he was catching some giants when I fished with him many times and he never loses fish. He, wow. he never does. He always, he's always landing them. He's always catching them. And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable that they catch six pounders on them little number fours. It is Mike. And yeah. I think if, since we're talking about Ryan Buttermore and he's, he's a good dude, I think maybe we ought to let some people know that, uh, you did unpack some mega bass rods today. Oh yeah, finally them, yeah. finally today we we that. got a nice shipment of uh uh Rochi uh, uh rods and the uh Le Leviathans um Levantes right? or, I'm sorry, Levantes. Yeah. Uh the Levantes are here and uh it, you'll see those quantities in there tonight or tomorrow. Uh if you guys were looking for some of those, we got uh, a lot of spinning rods and some casting rods. So we got a nice selection of them so they they came in today so you definitely want to check those out. Yep. Uh, online or in the shop here this weekend. Um, so that, that kind of wraps up. That was the last tournament of the year for the elite series. Um, you know, it kind of wraps up that, that whole elite series event, um, the whole year, except for one thing, what the fighter, man. Oh yeah. Well, the fighter, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, how, how can we not talk how, about, how's he do that? Is it like this or something? Llama. Llama, like this, llama, llama, llama land or something, llama, whatever they yeah. say. I don't know. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he, yeah, well deserved. Absolutely. Solid year. Great guy. Great for the sport. Yep. He just has a great, great personality, man. He's just and, so yeah. calm, cool. He, 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 you know, he keeps saying, you know, I was, I was, I was, you know, I was so born to do to, this, you yeah. know, and he, and he, and he really was. I mean, he, he, he does really well. And, and like he said, I, I watched a couple of his interviews and, he kept saying that, you know, he didn't do anything special. He just made the right decisions all year long and everything went his way. He had one bad day at tournament fishing, which was the first day of this year. The rest of them, he said, I just got bites when I was, you know, supposed to get bites. It was meant to be. Yeah. And uh, I've always said I'd rather be lucky than good. Oh, yeah. Um, in tournament fishing because, you know, it really comes down to making the right decisions, the right equipment. But lady luck has to has to be there a little bit. Absolutely. And, and for anybody who thinks – that's not true. You know, just think about the times you've done really well. Uh, think about, you know, what you were doing or what you were thinking. And then you just made that small little, you know, Split got decision. lucky or yeah. you just drifted the wrong way or whatever. And you've stumbled across a big school of fish. Um, so, you know, yeah. but at whatever, I mean, he's a very skilled angler. Everybody knows that. So, you know, but he's up against 30 or 40 guys that are just as skilled that can do it, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, those, uh, you know, you know, I'd, like I said, I'd rather be lucky than good any day of the week. And we hope that George is uh, making rubbing elbows with fighter to try to get him to come here. And yeah, we've been trying. To well, uh, he, I did talk to George last night. He, yeah. he talked to many of the guys and they're all excited about coming on the show. We're going to make a better, much, much better effort. I think we got our technology figured out, get some of these guys on there, pick their brain, have them, have them come on and talk about what we, we like to talk about and, uh, maybe, um, you know, get at least once a month or, or, or so get these guys involved in, in more of the show. So if you guys have somebody you want to see on here, you know, let us know, man, we'll, uh, we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely do that. So congratulations to Seth fighter and, and Taco Ito for their, for their, for their wins this weekend, this past weekend. Uh, congratulations. It was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, the other thing that was going on was a Toyota series uh up on uh lake champlain. champlain and um that was that was a crazy tournament it was it was and uh you know, i thought brian thrift was gonna pull it out but you know all, all good things coming to an end my friend and uh yeah you know he's probably there scouting for a tournament coming in the next couple of weeks but uh yeah I mean, hats off to the guy that won and uh i know we got some special shout outs <clears throat> we gotta talk about but. well it was steven uh steven esther and he's just a hammer up there. Yep. And he had a uh, 61-3 for the win. Um, pretty pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool story there. He he uh, um, he searched and searched and searched 140 hours on his uh, motor or something. on his motor, just idling around. No, no, it was 90 to 140. So whatever the difference is there. Uh, 50. 50 hours he yep. he idled around for 50 hours in practice looking for something away from because he doesn't like fishing in crowds nope so he looked for something away from the crowds and he stumbled across this this school of fish and and he just absolutely whacked them um he caught them really good and then uh um you know the top 10 were were, were doing some crazy stuff now normally it's a offshore drop shot you know uh electronics type of thing but a lot of these guys ended up flipping docks or or they run the tie and catch largemouth right i mean some of the guys ran a tie but yeah. they were still fishing shallow yeah there was a lot of shallow fish and there was a lot of shallow fishing going on our own uh, uh joe thompson, joe thompson JT, jt he ended up in ninth place um he uh, he was on the fish to win he just they he just didn't didn't uh, execute the last day but a great finish overall uh ninth place 53 14 um and uh he 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 did the same thing he had a couple docks that he ran uh he fished him with a senko and caught some key largemouth but he also had some other fish smallies that were you know a little bit deeper and he and he so he, you know a lot of these guys weighed in mixed bags yeah he had a ditch and was catching them on a drop shot in the jig that's what he said yep, he yep. In and, you know, absolutely hats off to jt and yep. you know keep up and the then board. uh our other other friend of the of sft uh peak lusick he had a nice uh finish he ended up 13th place yep. And Pete's always a hammer up there. Always. Yeah. Always. So the uh, Dean um, did well, 13th place. Uh, I'm sure he's going to stay up and fish the um, BFL. BFL this coming weekend. Yep. Because that's where, you know, we're, we're missing another person here. Yeah. Nick Wink. Wink. Our cameraman, Nick Wink, yep. he, he's gone. 
He gone. So we don't have a cameraman. That's why we're zoomed in a little bit more. We don't have a cameraman. We're trying to do this on our own. Just me and Corbin. So, well, uh, but Nick Wink is, yeah. uh, he's up there uh, practicing. Nick, how you doing? I, I don't know if you're watching or not, but um, how you doing, buddy? I hope you're catching him. He said he, had, he stumbled across something today. That's good. So he was he was up a couple times and he was catching small fish, but he, he said he stumbled across something. He's hoping he's gonna, they're going to be there for Saturday, which they never are, Nick. <laughs> so keep looking, pal. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so those guys are fishing. Uh, they're going to be fishing up there this weekend. So there's still a lot of tournament fishing going on. Um, so congratulations to Steve uh, Stephen Esters with the 63 pounds up in the wind up on Lake Champlain. On Lake Champlain. 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 <laughs> you got, the hot you got, sauce got my tongue dude, all screwed up. You got, you got the Canadian accent. Champlain. Yeah, Champlain. Champlain. You got the, the Champlain -o. The French Quebec or whatever. Yeah. We're doing the Champlain -o here. Yeah. So, and then next week, and not this coming weekend, but next weekend is the, the open on Lake Oneida. And today we had a couple of competitors come through. Yes, we did. And, uh, and, and and they were getting ready. They were on their way up to Oneida to start practicing in this weekend. And um, they're, they, they, I mean, they, they, they bought some tackle today. Oh, yeah. And that, that event could be very, very interesting. I mean, because the, the, the smallmouth keep getting bigger and bigger. But they do. Then you got people like Stan Sipek that always catch largemouth up there. And, you know. Play. Problem with the largemouth bite I always found, Corbin, is it's. It's hard to get four days out of them. You only need three in the open. Is that what it is? Three, right? Right. Uh, yeah, it should be three days. Is that what it is? Yeah. It's hard to get three days out of it. So you need to catch some smallmouth and go. You for need that. to have, you know, the, the first day you can weigh in like twenty something pounds, no problem. Second day you probably can do it again, but it's it's hard to do it up there. Yeah. Especially after you know so many people learned about the largemouth bite up there. Right. I think right. Um, Biffle didn't he, was he the, wasn't he the guy that kind of exposed it? Yeah, sure. I don't know. Yeah, it was either it was it was either Biffle or one of those guys exposed it up there uh, many years ago uh, when they were whacking large mouth like it was going out of style. It was pretty awesome. And then yeah. we all kind of went up there and <laughs> started doing the same thing. And they were pretty stupid large mouth back in. Yeah, you know who else is really good on large mouth up there if he fishes is Mike Shumanis. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's going to fish it or not. I don't know. He usually jumps in, <clears> but we'll see. Colby, how you doing? Scott Kalen, what's happening, bro? Uh, what's he saying? Daniel Henson wants Ed, Edwin Evers. Oh, oh, e Edwin Evers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. We know Edwin. We uh, I was on a boat with him when they introduced the uh, Lawrence <laughs> motor. <laughs> you want to tell that story? <laughs> That's pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, that was a good time. Yeah. We almost threw him out of the boat. Yep. Almost walked off the front of that uh, Vexus. Vexus. Yeah. <laughs> it was the first time the Vexus was there. Uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that was so, yeah, we know him. We could probably get him in there. Um, John cop uses a 22 for trout fishing. <laughs> uh, I believe that John, what 22 caliber, no 22 hook. Oh, I thought you meant 22 caliber rifle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bigger the number, the smaller the hook. Yep. This is the way that rolls. It's opposite. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, B Biffle was uh, was flipping Scott Snare. Absolutely, I think it was B Biffle flipping um, the wood up there, and uh, I think he exposed that largemouth bite. I saw George Ashbridge just chimed in. Yeah, Justin Bean, how you doing? George, we'll be talking more about James high water Hawk fishing a little bit. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Uh, so thank you everybody for stopping yes. by tonight. And uh, as always, we are talking fishing here on Tackle Shop Live. Um, for you guys that don't know, my name is Mike Acord. This is Corbin Gottwalt. Yep. George Acord is not here. He's AWOL. AWOL. <laughs> he's, he's down and uh, enjoying ICAST for you guys just tuning in. Um, so it's just but me and Corbin. will be back next week. He will be back next oh, week. Oh, yeah. He's going to have a lot. We're going to have a lot of discussion I mean, on to tackle next yeah. week. It's going to be yeah. fun. He's going to have a lot of stories to tell us. Uh, hi, Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin is a uh, man in the, the other computer. Caitlin, um, Caitlin the, Skiles. She's the one that would not man the camera. She wouldn't do the camera. Yeah. She, she wanted to do it. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's that. That's the uh, Oneida. Um, the Elite Series schedule for next year is out, and I printed it off yeah. for guys who are wondering. Um, too many papers. I know. Uh, so it starts out in February, of course, in Florida, and they're doing the St. John's again which I don't think they're ever going to leave there because it's always such a good tournament. 
Uh, February the 17th, they go to the Harris chain. So they're pretty much back to back tournaments there. Yep. Um, and then March four through six is, uh, Lake Hartwell. No, wait, that's the a classic class, classic. Yep. Lake Hartwell in the class is the classic March four through six. And then the elite series gets back on the road again, March 17th through 20th at Santee Cooper. That one's going to be, that's always a good tournament. That could be a giant slam bag tournament, or it could yeah. really stink. <laughs> one or the other and then uh all, april 7th through the 10th is chickamauga yeah what do you think of that that is going to be an absolute that could be a beat fest. down yeah what would josh hoshauer is going to fish a bfl down on uh, james river i nice. see that um, jason christie said something like you may need like wheelbarrows to bring these bags to the scales uh, next year or something like i that. think so they're planning them they plan them with this you know they they do get the best dates yep and then may they're going to lake fork May 19th through 22nd, they're going to Lake Fork. It's going to be a beat down on the old 6XD. Oh, no, no, no. no jerk no. bait. Dude. I don't know. That no. was, that's, I think right. that was a fluke. What? I think the, I was a fluke from, spook? from in May. I don't know, man. Well, spook for sure. I, I, well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it happens. Usually, twice. usually it's that offshore deep diving crankbait, and that's when uh, Combs. Uh, Combs kills it. I mean, my guess is it's going to take over 100 pounds. But. <laughs> You know, who knows? It could it could be another another uh, jerkbait yeah. thing. We know, you know, post spawn type could, of tournament could be. You know, where they're just coming off post spawn, and then um, July fourteenth through seventeenth, uh, back up to the. How about the TBA, man? June second to the fifth. What is that? To be announced. Yeah. Meaning, you throw, know, throw one in there. Well, uh, maybe something's not finalized yet. Yeah, I think. But that's I kind of think it's very interesting, and I wonder if our viewers, if anybody's heard rumors of where they may be going. That'd be cool. I mean, I would think it's going to be somewhere in the in between east area, maybe Virginia, Maryland, um, Potomac. I, I was, I was hoping Potomac's Potomac. really coming back, man. And and they haven't been there in forever. Yeah. And, and I was also thinking maybe the James River, because you know they love the James, dude. Yeah. So, and it seems too early to go to New York. James, James is bad to the bone. Yeah. Uh, August 18th through 21st is uh, Lake Oa Oa Oahe. Oahe, I think. In South Oahe. Dakota. That's uh, They fished that before. Yeah. That's like a gigantic 150-mile-long lake or something like that. Huge. Huge lake <laughs> Ken, up, up Ken, in South Dakota. Kenny Clemmer says they're going to Blue Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck here. Maybe the Delaware River. Yeah, maybe. Uh, who knows? And then finalizing the, the season is going to be the Mississippi River and lacrosse. That's going to be a beatdown. Oh. Smallmouth beatdown. Oh. Archie's? Swim jig. Brogan. Oh, that's swim yeah, jig, right? Swim jig flipping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's going to be one of those where it's going to be tough to catch, you know, the weight you need on five because you're going to catch a lot of fish. At least historically, that's the way it goes. Yeah. But yeah. So there you have so, your tournament talk. And, uh, well, you got Corbin. Anything for tournament talk? Well, there's one thing I think we got to touch on just real quick, and then we'll transition. This Sunday, oh there's yeah, tournament talk, and the tournament talk is going to be at Conowingo for the third event of the year. You yeah, know, your your guys SFT series. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Setlock said what blast offs at six. I think mm -hmm. registration starts at five. Um, so for those of you guys looking to jump in a, a quick derby this weekend, um, yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, so. Uh, like Corbin said, this is the third of seven, and um, the first two were great. We had some great weights, and and we had great turnouts. Um, it's it's a lot of fun competition, and for for anybody who just you know kind of new to tournament fishing, this is what this is all about. It's about you know getting your feet in there, fishing a couple of tournaments, getting used to tournament fishing, yep, and getting yourself you know figuring out how to mentally fish a tournament as opposed to just going fishing. You know, it's different. It's totally different. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we have a good time down there. Um, and the fishing, the fishing's tough, but it's 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 good. They've been waiting some good fishing. So uh, I think this weekend's going to be a, a a real big beat down. If it's like anything else on the uh, rest of the river, um, <laughs> it's it could be like really exceptional fishing down there because the water's going to be dirty. The fish could be shallow. It could be a chatterbait bite, a spinnerbait bite, a crankbait bite. It could be a lot of different things going on. Yeah. And some of the lower pool stuff could really crank on. So give those smallmouth guy a, guys a run for their money. Yeah. Mike, uh, for, looks like Fred Knopf just asked you a question. What's up? So what do you do when you show up at Conowingo and the floating dock is setting on the rocks about six foot low and looks like mud puddle? Have fun Sunday. Ooh. 
Is that the way it is right now? I don't know. Huh. Well. I don't know. I guess we go to the upper river and fish for smallies. I mean, I know that's where I'm going. Ah, they'll bring it up for the weekend. They'll bring it up for the weekend, Fred. They always do. They must have been doing some maintenance or something because they're supposed to they're supposed to keep a uh, a minimum pool level in the summer. So they, they must have been doing something. Fred said Monday. Uh, Dan Henson said, "Where is the takeoff? Where is the takeoff at for that tournament?" Uh, takeoff is at the Peach Bottom Power Plant uh, boat ramp. You can launch wherever you want and, and and show up there. I always launch over at Peach Bottom Marina over at Three Holes and run across in the morning. Um, beautiful ramp over there. Uh, so. I don't know. Fred's saying it's not going to come up till Monday, so we're gonna to have to check on that. It could be a problem for Peach Bottom Marina. Hmm. Getting down to that creek. I already got my answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think it'll be all right. I think they'll yeah. have water. Hopefully. Yeah. We're hoping, Fred. We'll keep an eye on that. We're gonna make some calls tomorrow on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can go out of anywhere, but but they're blasting off at the power plant at Muddy Muddy uh, Creek or uh, Peach Bottom Power Plant uh, boat ramp. So that'll be at six o'clock. Just be there a little bit before to pay your entry fee yeah. and get yourself registered. It don't take, doesn't take long at all. A few minutes and you're ready to go. And then weigh ins at three o'clock. So it's a good full day of fishing and yeah, it could be a fun time. Yep. So come on out for that. That's going to be fun. Uh, I think that wraps up. I, I think we're done with tournament talk. I think tournament talk is, is, uh, I mean, is a wrap. There's there's only a couple couple more things to say, but uh, not yeah. tournament related. No. So guess what? Let's talk some tackle. Tackle starting right now. No, Andre. It's going to be Dorsey Park. We're going to check. I'll have uh, I'll have those guys check on. I think it'll be all right. We'll see. Richie Hall says he would love to share his experience as a BASS marshal last week, but he's on the tractor trying to get two acres mid before the sun goes down. <laughs> well, Richie, we, we respect your loyalty. I hope you have a cold beer in one hand and a well, uh, steering wheel in the other. Yeah. And, you know, you know what was neat about that uh, was marshalling. You know, yeah. uh, well, there was a lot of guys from Lancaster area. I believe it. Who were up there. I mean, I there was, it. I know of at least five guys that were up there and uh, they had a ball, man. They said they had a blast doing that. So wow. I don't know if any of them had to run that two and a two and a half hour run down there. Yeah. I, I, I was wondering if the bitches went up to Marshall because can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what's up. I'll but tell yeah. you what's up. Yeah. Can't hear nothing. My ears are blown out because I ran two and a half hours, you know, 80 miles an hour. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But that would be the only problem with that. I know. But uh, so we have some new new additions to our tackle lineup that we we just put in. Uh, so we're going to talk about a couple things. Um, and I think first thing we want to talk about is uh, the releases, the new releases that were that are coming into to SFT here. Yeah, uh, we're really excited about it. I thought they were going to get here today, but they're going to be here tomorrow. Uh, and that's the new G Loomis GCX series. So. What G Loomis did was they redeveloped the old E6X series that they did. They're discontinuing and they're coming out with the GCX series. So it's always tweaked. Every time they do this, they tweak it. They make it a little bit better. But, um, you know, uh, the GCX, always, you know, it has a very durable blank. So it's a it's a friendly blank. It's a it's a durable blank. It's a, a blank you can beat around a little bit and, and it's going to hold up really well for you. Yep. The other thing they did, too, is they put C guide uh guides on hero one guides so what are those those are a tangle free guide set so it's uh it's great for like really like braid yeah it's that angle guide a little bit you know it helps helps with the line not get catching wind knots or tangling up plus it there's a lot of guides on the blank and it helps with um with the cast okay you get better accuracy out of it you're going to get better distance out of it um, you're going to get be better feel and sensitivity because you have a lot of touch points on your blank. Yep. Um, the tapers are true. There's 23 models that are available. So you can wow. get, you know, the, um, the, 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 the rods that are all around rods, like the 854 and the 853. You can get those rods that are just great all around rods. But yep. they also have like really especially rods like crankbait rods right they've got um they've got drop shot rods they you know they have a model for pretty much everything so there's a lot of the, the, the you know 
but the big thing that they that they really did is they got the Fuji handle, you know, cork grips, high grade uh, species cork grips. But the big thing is, is the balance. They 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 made them lighter. Okay. They made them more durable, and they made them more sensitive. So okay. we like the second generation E6X a E6X lot. E6X is a phenomenal. That was a yeah. great great rod, yeah. and for them to be lighter and more powerful and uh, more sensitive is 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 going to be a big big bonus yeah we have a big load of those coming in tomorrow they're going to be here tomorrow um so hopefully at least that's what george told me today he gave me a tracking number and everything so i'm hoping it's going to be true we'll see but you guys can check it out they're all ready to uh be uh or turned on on the website they're there you guys can go take a look at it and see what they're all about um you got, you got any reels coming with them rods mikey yeah. So also, I'm just I'm trying to I, I'm not used to holding the Bible. Uh, well, I'm not I'm not used to holding the book, the tackle shop book that George always holds. Number one and num number two, try to do that and produce at the same time and read everybody's comments. It's very difficult for me to read two things at once. I'll take your first of all. It's hard for me to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard but for you to write too, based, try to read two based things on that. try to read two things so uh yeah. that's why we put sft on the hat so you don't have to really read it it says sft right that was my idea but anyway uh so um the, those gcx are coming and along with that there's going to be two of the new releases shimano reels that are coming and that's the the, the brand new nexave that's all new redesign it's an inexpensive priced reel Okay. But it's very high quality. Okay. And it's light. It's uh it's powerful. It's got a great drag in it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's gonna be like forty nine to fifty nine dollar range in there. Okay. And go ahead. Mike Barr asked the cost of the new uh GCX. Mike, I think they're two fifty to two eighty range, depending on model, R roughly. I mean, don't don't quote me on that, but I think that's roughly about what it is. Uh I'm not hundred percent sure. Yeah. I didn't see the pricing on it. I can look it up pretty quick though. Yeah. We'll check that and we'll get we'll we'll answer that question for you, uh, Mike. Caitlin. Uh yeah, Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin, if you're listening. Caitlin, check the pricing yeah. on on the, the GCX, please. Uh so um the the but the other reel that I'm really excited about um is the uh NASCI. The NASCI, the, the new redesigned Shimano NASCI. Now everybody loves the NASCI of old we loved it it was 99 dollars, a solid reel yep. uh you know it was great to fish yeah they redid the, the reel and first of all it's really great looking reel okay and secondly they 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 tweaked it all around and brought it up to speed with everything else so hagani uh yeah it's gonna oh. be it's 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 i don't have all the specs on it but it's it's gonna be the real deal it's it's uh it's going to be probably the one of their best selling reels ever. It took the place of the symmetry right years ago. So that was a big shoe to fill. Oh yeah. And everybody thought it, that they did a great job with it. Well, that's the same thing this time. They, 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 um, they, they redid, redid they redid it and they kind of put all the new, 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 uh, technology from some of their other reels into this reel. Yep. And for $99, it's, it's going to be an exceptional, exceptional reel for you. They're going to be here tomorrow. I was going to, I was hoping to be able to hold one, in my hand today and show you guys but they just didn't get here you know shipping whatever they're going to be here tomorrow yeah um uh chase walton how you doing buddy yeah we're doing well thank you buddy yep yeah oz. um look at oz oz is stirring the pot always new oz George how you doing oz son yeah <laughs> <laughs> right so uh so that's coming in tomorrow you guys are gonna be able to see that and purchase them we got a lot of reels coming we got 50 some reels of uh, each one of those so we're gonna have a lot of those we got uh and i also saw that there's some of the new zodius actions huh. coming uh-oh uh-oh yeah uh, that's, they, awesome. that's what george put in his text now if it's wrong it's george so i think in that box also is going to be some of the new zodius uh yeah. actions and some of those are glass rods about time yeah crankbait I mean, rods yeah. so hopefully uh those crankbait rods will be showing up and we'll have some of those so um lot of tackle coming in this week also new that we that we got in this week not new but uh back in stock um we got some a bunch of daiwa um tatula so if you guys were looking for uh svtw 
um, in the 103's compact version. I got a nice selection of those. Uh, I got a nice selection of the SVTW um, uh, Tatula standard. Um, I got those in, uh, in right hand. And I don't know if I've got one or two left-handed models in, but we got a nice stack of those in here. Um, we got some pitching and flipping, yep. um, elite series Tatulas, and I got some regular elite series Tatulas, uh, back in stock. So, uh, I can make sense now of all those reels. If you guys want to know, uh, come in or call us, we'll make sense of all these Tatulas. They're very, very confusing. Yeah, it, it, it is. It, it's it, become more confusing than loose. It, I, I'm just gonna say that right now. I, I don't know where they're going with this, but they got like a yeah. million more of these tattoos coming out again. Right. And uh, but I, I made sense of the ones that we had that we have and what we stock now. Um. So, oh, I got some steez in too. Some new steez. Oh. Yeah. Some of the steez uh, are back in stock. So, uh, make sure you, if you're looking for the oh, and and uh, fuego twenty five hundred fuegos. For a 109 price point, freaking phenomenal spinning reel. Whoa. In awesome. stock. Awesome. Yep. Got some new MQ 2500s back in stock. Saw those, yeah. Yeah, the KJ. Or, uh, yeah, KJ Did MQs. You, oh, KJs, okay. KJ MQs. So they're back in stock. Uh, you got BG MQs I saw today. We got some some a lot of new BG stuff for you guys uh, wanting to cross over to some salt water. We got that stuff in stock. Uh, you definitely want to stock uh, check that out. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then of course Corbin mentioned the Mega Bass Orochi Triple X. We have uh, seven or eight different models of those came in. The uh, Levante, we uh, spinning and casting. We had seven or eight models of those, along with the seven ten flipping rods. Oh, which are hard to come by. So we got nice. those back in stock. Um, so they're here. You can check those out this weekend. It's a good, good, be a good weekend to come to the tackle shop. Yeah, and, and I, I took some other notes here on some stuff I wanted to highlight too. I mean, you guys have a tractor trailer load of Yamamoto out right now. Yeah. Um, and I know that some of that stuff's been tough to come by, but you know, uh, a lot of that got restocked. Uh, white super flukes. Oh you know, my but, gosh. I mean, sounds crazy. Thank but, God uh, Almighty. Yep. I know you guys put a bunch of them out. Uh, War Eagle spinner baits. Uh, Definitely we, not at a shortage there. We got a um, truckload of War Eagle spinner baits in. It's War Eagle spinner baits. You guys got a ton of chatter baits. Yeah. Um, and we'll be talking about a lot of that stuff here in a little bit. Yep. Yep. Um, Absolutely. But, uh, Mike, Mike, Bob, we tried to get George to do an ICAST report live, but he's actually out to dinner. Um, he's making some contacts with St. Croix people tonight. Yep. Yep. It's going to straighten that mess out out there. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, Hayden <laughs> Roth, uh, the new G Loomis line. Some of it should be here tomorrow. Um, that's that's what we were told. Um, it, depending on what line you're looking at, we do have some of the new NRX pluses here. Uh, of course, select models. So without knowing the specific line that you're looking at, um, yeah, the GCXs, which is probably yeah. what you're talking about, yeah. they're, they're they're due in here tomorrow. So we're gonna have I don't know how many rods we're getting. Supposedly it's 50 rods. Whoa, which. Doesn't seem like a lot, but in this day and age, that's that's a, that's lot. a lot of rots. That's a lot. You know, because it's so hard to get this stuff. But they, they're taking care of us, so we should have a a pretty good slug of those rods um, here for you guys to check out yep. this weekend, starting tomorrow, hopefully. So yep. we'll see for sure. But check with us, um, Hayden. You know, check with us tomorrow. Um, check our online because as soon as, as soon as it populates in here, it populates on the website. So because it's a live inventory on our website, so you can kind of follow that along there when you see it pop in there. You can come check it out or, or purchase them right online. Yep. Um, Rachel Raby, see you Saturday. Tucker. Tucker, what's up? Man? What up, brother? Andre Albernaz. I'm not sure if we have the four inch cinnamon black purple. Uh, I'm guessing probably because there's a lot over there. Cinnamon black. I think we got some cinnamon black over there. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, a truckload of Senkos. I mean, that was like that was like 18 boxes of Senkos that each box weighed about 500 pounds. <laughs> Stuff's heavy, man. Dude, that's why. I mean, I don't. When the old, when the old uh, Fed, FedEx comes FedEx in. driver shows up with eighteen boxes, he's like sweating bullets, man. He's <laughs> like, uh, I got a bunch of these Yamamoto out here, uh, eighteen boxes. If you want to help out, you know, they never that's ask funny. for help until you get Yamamoto. It's uh, it's definitely uh, stretches you out if you know what I mean. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um. So yeah, tackles rolling in here really good, and and um and then and then one of the things that we just popped up on the website, which we want to talk about. 
here right now is the new er uh <laughs> strike king tour yes spinner bait yes uh so we 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 got finesse. that we finally got it finesse finesse hmm? finesse that's not a finesse uh that's a finesse finesse oh finesse anyway tour grade finesse that's right yep uh so that's this that's this spinner bait right here now it's uh, let's see so, that little bit there yeah and i i had the privilege of fishing this back in the spring a lot yeah i, mean, I threw this a lot and it's, uh we gotta get the glare down it's got a wide variety of colors here's only some of them let me see if i can get this to yeah get right um they make a golden shiner for those of you guys that fish the suspect look at that one there look at this one hot pink hot pink Oh, make, that's homie pink right there. Homie pink. Here's the golden. Shiner. I know Pete. Pete probably probably heard that one all the way from here. Yep. Here's like a crawl bluegill type one. They also make a spot remover. Obviously, they make your chartreuse and white. They make everything. Yeah. Um, three eighths and half ounce. Everything's double willows. Uh, very impressive spinner bait. Very impressive. Yeah. Uh, priced right. Um, very durable. Uh, KVD likes it so. Oh, dude, I, that's saying something. Yeah. I, I like it. What's that say? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm CMG. I'm no KBD, <laughs> but it works for me, man. So, uh, but yeah, I, I like it, man. It's been, uh, it's been good. Premium hooks. Good. It's a, it's got a wire tied skirt. So you don't have to worry about that coming off. Hey, Scott That's Goldsmith. There, you just chimed in. There hey, Scott, Scott, we just did a whole thing on your, on your hot sauce. Yeah. We called it taco, taco sauce. We were trying to figure out what taco Ito put in his baits. There it is right there. I got them all right here, buddy. Yep. It was fantastic. We burnt all of our tongues to nothing. You said they weren't hot, you lying. <laughs> yeah. They were good. It was fantastic, let me tell you. So, so yeah, I mean. Now, let me tell you something you don't know, Corbin. What? It's They're coming be. out with another version of this thing. Get out of here. No, with Colorado's, like a finesse oh. Colorado. You know, like the um, they're coming out with uh, like three different sizes of it. Are they? But you know, like the, the War Eagle finesse yeah. series, it's going to be a lot like that. Get out of here. No, in that's the a, in the tour dude, grade. That's my yeah. That's my. That's I think my it's coming. It, it's a fall release, so we're gonna have them all here in the fall. That's my bait, bro. George got them all lined up. He told me that tonight when I was talking to him on the phone. So he's got he's got these blades all lined up. He's gonna bring them all in in the in the in the Colorado versions. Wow. So and and the key is it's got a light wire, so it, tons of vibration. Tons of vibration. Yeah, dude. holds up well though. Yeah, yeah. It's got, it has a good it, hook in it. Eagle call. Oh, Shaganessi hook. Ah, oh, so there you have it. Has a catch good, old Bessie on that yep, thing, you know? Has a good quality hook it's, in it. It's a good bait, man. It's yeah, bait. priced right, too. Priced right. So um, they're all up on the website. You guys can go there and check them out. Caitlin um, just posted it. it. Caitlin just posted the link on there. Um, you know, spinnerbait season is now, man. It's happening right now. There's a lot of fish being caught on, on the spinnerbait. Um, so if that's the perfect timing for, for that. Tucker said I did some damage on the Potomac on that War Eagle finesse. Oh yeah, that thing's <laughs> bad to the bone. And they yep. and the three sixteenths, which everybody likes on the Potomac, they discontinued that three sixteenths War Eagle. They discontinued it. So if you guys are holding on to three sixteenths War Eagles, we're paying good money for them here. I like five sixteenths personally. Well, that's five sixteenths good, but that's, that's what I made the All American on. The five sixteenths, bro. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you right now, the three sixteenths. Those guys are smashing giants down there on it right now. Dang. Three sixteenths. You know, Gold, you know Goldie that does that bait, that crankbait. Yeah, he was up here today looking looking for him. Dang. Drove all the way up from Maryland. Dang, he thought I had him. Dang. So Gold and Goldie's a hammer down there. Wow. And that's what he's catching them on down there. Well, I should have said that. Oop. They they got back. Oop. Sorry, Goldie. Well, yeah. nobody can get him, so he's safe. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Well, but anyway. Well, Mike, I'm about to bust out something here. What? I mean, I think it's time for you to break something down. Yeah, I could break something down. Ready? Yeah. I mean, we're we're sticking with the theme of Strike King. Yeah. Lose KVD. Yep. Well, here we go. Here's the latest right here. Latest for us. To, you know, it's 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 new to us. New to us. Everybody probably knows about him, but here is the which one you want to do first. Uh, Those are the KVD. Yeah, I'll do this guy right here. So this is the um, the Lose Custom Speed Stick. Um, it is. I, I I don't know how to explain this to you. I wish I had uh, something you could feel this thing. Um, but the rods are one hundred and forty nine dollars, and they feel like two hundred and fifty dollars rods. They're super light. Yeah. Um, it's the HM sixty uh, graphite. They got very unique handles. Yes, on they them. do. There's no foregrip. There's yeah. They got very unique handles. So when you want to talk about holding on to the blank, you're holding right here with this special. Um, 
uh, grip style uh, real, real, real seat, your whole hand is onto the blank. So it's really increases the sensitivity. It's a screw up from the bottom locking system. So um, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a clutch lock. So as you tighten it, it locks down and it, it's not, it's not going to come loose. Everybody says, Oh yeah, th those types of handles come loose in your hand. This thing won't cause it's clutch. No. No. It has a clutch in it. So um, it's a clutch lock system that you can put your reel on with. Um, but the big thing about these is they're very powerful technique specific rods, super, super light. The tapers are, are general tapers. They're not like extra fast tapers. They're, they're more uh, fast, not parabolic, but they're more fast taper, power tapers, um, worming, jigging, um, tubing on their spinning bait rods or right. spinning rods or, you know, their spinning rods. I wish we had one of those. It was a, they have a double, can, you, Corbin's going to grab one, but they have a really unique handle on the, on the spinning rods. So for you lose fans out there, we, you know, we have the custom speed stick in stock, um, ready to go. Um, you know, with the high grade, you know, they, 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 they're doing, uh, they're doing the, like I said, the clutch handle and they got the, uh, yep. Fuji guides on them. And here's a spinning rod. This thing's cool. This thing's super cool. The spinning rod. Um, when you put your reel on the, the reel seat splits apart, you can see it splitting apart there. And then you put your reel in and when you tighten it up, it doesn't even start getting tight till it comes all the way back together on any reel. I tried it on a Shimano. I sold, I sold a Shimano on it. I sold a Daiwa on it, but it comes back together. Now it's that one smooth piece of high density um, foam handle. And it's a very comfortable handle. So guys who don't like the small grip reel seats, a lot of complaints on you know, the small grip reel seats cramping your hand up. This is a larger size reel seat um, that you'll love. You'll absolutely love it. Uh, again, this is our drop shot rod right here. Um, drop shot special. So it's a, it's a, it's more of a, it's more of a, 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 a medium light action, but with that nice wide taper to handle those big fish with light line. Perfect, perfect setup. Uh, again, $149, super light, feels real good when you're fishing it. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's going to be, it, it's, re it really is a, an awesome, awesome rod that they, they did a great job with it. So that's the, um, that's the lose speed stick. And then the second one we got, let me grab them here. Uh, the second rod that we are, um, checking out here is the kvd now everybody knows that kvd was big time quantum for years and years and years and um he you know designed uh you know a lot of rods for quantum and fish quantum for years and years well he switched over to uh lose this year and uh went right to work with him he's been working with him i think prior to us knowing really what was going on because these rods came out pretty quickly but they're all KBD actions, um, uh, you know, high quality graphite blanks. Again, uh, KVD puts out, and he's he's honest about this. He puts out and he fishes this stuff. It's not like he doesn't fish it. And he wins with it. Yeah, he fishes his his own stuff because you know you always think, well, he's he's fishing a three hundred dollar rod or whatever. And he could be doing that, and uh, he probably does have a couple, but he fishes these rods. These are $99 rods. The KVD series of Lou's is $99, and it's it's IM8 graphite. It's technique-specific. Um, all the great actions. He has a great spinnerbait rod. He has a, you know, his spinning rods also. Uh, he carries a, a nice line of spinnerbait uh, spinning rods for all your finesse fishing, tube fishing, uh, Ned rigs, all that kind of stuff. You got actions for that um these this rod right here is the uh uh skipping dock and frogging rod and it's and it's right i mean it's it's the right length it's the right taper it's the right action um very good there and this is the finesse rod right here all-purpose all finesse purpose, rod yeah. so that does it all but you know again nice quality real seats uh um but light really light overall yep and that's the kvd line in stock right now on the website you can check them out on the website all this stuff on the website um, as Caitlin's putting them up there for you. So, you know, we 
you know, we're a loose shop. We carry a lot of loose reels. Um, and we, and now we're carrying a lot of loose rods. The other rod that we carry a lot from them is the David Fritz cranking rod. <laughs> you know, you want to talk about a stupid, stupid, uh, stupidly priced rods. This, these things are $79. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the real question, Mike. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say this for the viewers, but I'm going to $79.99 for David Fritz or $99.99 for KVD. I'm just saying, like, I mean, yeah. well, I mean, like, you know, what, what you first notice with the David Fritz rod is the real seat. It's a little different. It's, it's the fit and finish isn't quite as nice as the day as the KVD, but KVD, man, he's a cranking fool. I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's I, a cranking fool and everybody knows. The, I love the, David Fritz, but yeah. I mean, I, yeah. So you can see all those rods online and um, it's all loaded up. You can check out all the spinner baits online, all loaded up, ready to go. Um, yeah. All of the new releases that we're getting in are ready to go. We just got to turn them on when they come through the door. So uh, Matt's been working diligently on them, uh, putting everything up. I know he's watching tonight because he, I, I stole his uh, connection to the computer system here. So I, I know he's watching. Matt's doing a <laughs> wonderful job there um, and keeping keeping that up to date and yep. uh and and piling stuff on there so you're going to see a lot of a lot of stuff that we have been wanting to get up for a long time it, it just hasn't gotten there and, it, and now 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 we're making it happen so yeah. that that's pretty much a tackle review keep in touch with us from here until the until the middle of december we are on the top of the list for wait. all this stuff wait 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 what? wait 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 what from now until the middle of december so what Christmas comes around and just we gone? No, 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 no. no, no. no. Every day. I'm talking about week, all these. Oh, I'm no, talking about not, all not these just, releases. Not just until the middle of December, bro. I well, mean, we go all the time. I mean, I'm just saying, like, because then in January you got Bass Fest, and then you got Small Mouth Saturday, oh, yeah. and then you got Cabin Fever. I'm talking and new release season, product, then, you know, yeah, hot, the yeah, stuff that you guys exactly. are reading about and you're seeing from iCast from now until December, it's going to be floating in here. You know, every month there's going to be new stuff coming in, so... Make sure you stay here, listen to us, uh, and we'll break it down for you every week, as yep. we always do. Yep. But right now, we're going to talk a little bit of technique fishing, and that is going to be uh, on dirty water. Yeah, yeah man, right now, it's been raining like crazy uh, here in the Northeast. We've been getting dumped on with these thunderstorms. I'm sure all across the country, everybody's been getting hammered. And you have your water systems that get dirty right away. Yeah. Um, so Corbin was fortunate to get out last week and fish the, the river on Saturday and had an absolute banging day, didn't you? It was insane, dude. <laughs> it was insane. I I don't even know how many hundred fish we caught. And, I, and I'm not kidding when I say that. It was, it yeah, was the beat down. Crazy. Yeah. And, you know, you guys always hear us talk about, you know, rising water and what, the, you know, and dirty water and and don't be afraid of the mud, you know, be safe, but don't be afraid of the mud because those fish go shallow. And when they go shallow, they're, they they concentrate and then they also are easy to catch. Easier to catch. What are you saying? Are you saying that, like, I got lucky? I mean, <laughs> the saying they're <laughs> easier to catch. Hey, dude, uh, I found a massive school of fish, bro. Well, I, I'm just saying they're I mean, e they're easier to catch when it's dirty water. Yeah, they were and low clear water. Yeah, that's true. You know, so it's yeah. but you know this whole week we've been hearing stories from guys that are just smashing them out there. Yeah, right on the banks. You know, shallow water. You know, um, you know, and and it's fun fishing. So, you know, for me, you know, it's 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 when I hear the rivers going up or I hear the lakes going up, I'm going fishing. I'm going to fish that dirty water because I've always had great success on that first initial rise. Yeah. For me. Yeah. And uh, you know, and it's power fishing. Dude, that's yeah. It's great. power fishing, which is fun fishing. It's 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 spinner baits, it's chatter baits, it's crank baits. Yep. And and uh and and to prove that, Corbin, you you, you guys whacked them on on those those power baits. Dude, we whacked them. Yeah. I mean what were you guys throwing? Well, I was throwing a chatterbait. I mean, I threw a chatterbait almost all day. And then I, a, a jackhammer. Um, jackhammer, black and blue black is, blade, yeah. you know, black blade, black and blue jackhammer in that dirty water is absolutely fantastic. With, with a diesel minnow on it. And I, and I had one diesel minnow on it. I, I mean, I had extras in my boat. But yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about the diesel minnow with your last Texas. Or something like that. It, it was, 
I, I don't know. Yeah. It, was, it was dude, it was crazy. And and, and, they, and uh, they didn't destroy that trailer. No, no. I, I mean, I'd have had a pile of those of these of those Kitex on the floor. Oh yeah, and uh, that I, know, I like to fish. I also we all we also caught them on crankbaits with rattles and rattle traps and spinner baits. Imagine that. Yeah. So and, uh, it was it was a great time. Man. Yeah. So the bait, you know, what happens when the water rises is the bait gets pushed into eddy pockets and they get pushed into you know uh current breaks and the fish just well, go ahead yeah what was crazy was it wasn't the bait i mean yeah there was some bait fish blowing up on bait mm -hmm. they were all gorging crayfish every one of them i mean they were like i don't know if like doesn't have to be minnows bro bro the crayfish will crawl into those those bro they will crawl into those eddy pockets and current bro. seams they were just everywhere and they were spitting up two and three at the boat at the time yeah. man yeah, it's awesome. But you know that it does it pushes the bait into those areas, and then those fish don't want to fight that current, so they'll they'll get on the edge of those current current seams, so that they they can just sit there, and then they just ambush this bait as it comes out of that yeah out of those pockets, and it just gives you a, a it's a great time just to run a bank. You know, we always talk about fishing humps and lumps and and uh, structure and stuff. Well, this yeah. you just get on a bank and you just power roll, down a bank just roll and you just roll roll down through there and, you, and you're chucking a spinner bait you're chucking a a a, a, a chatter bait right, and uh you're crank cranking bait, you yeah. know and that kind of stuff and it, and, it, and you just cover a lot of water and you're just you know you'll run across a pocket that just has like 10 or 15 fish in it and just smash them yeah so but uh color wise on some of this stuff and i and this was this the week uh on a couple days before corbin was out we we had several customers throw in the chartreuse bladed bait. Now, this is something we've talked about many times on on Tackle Shop Live as a really, really awesome dirty water or cloudy day, but mostly dirty water spinner bait where you have that stain in the water. This thing was money. It's the War Eagle, um, you know, the 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 um half ounce screaming eagle and this thing is just it's it's heavy so it can go through the current real nice it stays nice and straight and it, it just it absolutely smashes fish in dirty water this thing was on fire on that first rise when it was really soupy you know a lot of debris a lot of everything yep. this thing was fire the guys absolutely smashed them on these we sold a boatload of them and um they it just works you know so this is a this is a dirty water spinner bait and this is one you definitely want to uh you know you definitely want to pick up and have in your box for these occasions uh now another one that we'd like to throw corbin in a spinner bait is the nickels the nickels the nickels yeah, yeah. but see for me I, I like the bigger blade so if you look at the, the bigger lead blade here in the dirty water i like a bigger blade whereas the the war eagle screaming eagle has two smaller blades so like for me in the dirtier water i don't throw the screaming eagle i throw the full size war eagle sure or i throw the nickels that has the sure four and a half lead absolutely blade. because i just feel like they can locate it better well you can but, flutter I mean, it a little bit too but either way i mean but that one there yeah. we talked about that one a lot this yeah. is the bone chartreuse, bone chartreuse yeah. this is a dirty water this is after the soupy kind of mud kind of goes away and, it, and you start to have that sediment dropping out a little bit but it's still it's still brown yeah it's still dirty water this this thing fires up and kicks off, and this is the the bone chartreuse that we have custom built for us here at Susquehanna Fish and Tackle, and you can get it online uh, now. This is uh this has a number four and a half uh number four and a half, a four in the front and a four and a half in the back, so it's it's a bigger bladed bait. You can flutter it a little bit more. You don't have to reel it as fast, and it's really good for kind of slowing your presentation up a little bit more. The Nichols bone chartreuse. It's unbelievable. That's another really good one. And then, uh, and then of course, the third spinner bait that we just absolutely love in dirty water, and that's the Golden Shiner. Everybody hears me talk about that all the time. One of my favorite dirty water. Now, I like this one when it starts to drop out a little bit more. Yep, you can get it in the in the striking version also. But I like I like this this one when it when it when it's still dirty, but it's not that. It's 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 even a little bit cleaner than when I would throw the barn bone chartreuse. You're starting to yep. you're starting to see a little bit of of uh, pockets having some green tinge in it, 
um, some of those eddy pockets are dropping out the sediment and and it's, you start to see a little bit of green but there's still the main flow is is dirty yeah this one here absolutely crushes them and the thing about it is when you're when you're doing this corbin is running through the baits oh yeah so how many baits did you go through throwing before you really dialed it in without being stupid one huh i had one tied on yeah and i picked up my jackhammer well and i caught a fish on my uh, you just cast. got lucky but most well, I, 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 mean, I, mean, I, mean, no, I, I mean you that's kind of bullshit no it's not it's a bullshit i live answer. right on the river i, knew I don't care dirty. but you can't tell me that every time you go out and you nail it one time every time no but i mean i literally saw from my dock that the water was dirty and i knew where i was going and that it was going to be dirtier so yeah. i tied up but how many Three times rods. did you do that and go and throw it out and not catch a fish on it? Not to, not yesterday, not on Saturday, I mean, but it happens. Yeah, it happens. It happens. So you got you got to be able to adjust. The point kind of like, is, yeah. the point is, since we're not all Corbin CG got all know. the you, greatest freaking fisherman no, in the no, whole no, world. No, 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 no. You asked you asked me on Saturday how many baits that I went through. I did. So I did. I did kind of do that. I, but I, since we're not all Cor Corbin CG got Walt, the god of all fishing people in the world name mike acord we have to kind of go through uh, a run of baits that you know that are dirty water baits and that's that's what we're doing here it's notice well, it's not a lot of baits it's not no it's and a few it's a few baits it's a few colors a few standard type colors and that's what we're trying to get out here is that you can have a couple of baits that um that you have that you know that are dirty water baits and yeah. that you can kind of shuffle through them because i'm telling you one day the gold shiner is going to whack them and then the next day, uh, you know, the bone chartreuse. Yeah. And then the next day, the the, the black uh, chatterbait. The, the big thing is the, the chatterbait is always going to catch big fish in dirty water. More times than not. It, at this yeah. time of year. So that's why I started with that. And yeah. then the spinnerbait that I had tied on, you know, I had a half ounce. Everything I ran was half ounce in the dirty water, um, except for crankbaits, obviously. But because... I, 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 I'm moving it quickly, and I'm either going to get bit or I'm not. So I had yeah. a bone chartreuse spinnerbait on. I had a black bladed ch uh, jackhammer, black and blue, half ounce with yeah. a diesel minnow trailer, and I had a crankbait. Yeah, and and I, you didn't even and, talk about the crankbait yet. No, and the crankbait that I had had a rattle. Yeah, and then the only other thing I tied on later in the day was a rattle trap. Yeah, there and, you go. And but and you smashed them on that rattle trap too. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't near. Like I mean, it was literally a chatterbait. It was it was crazy, sure. man. So that's why I said. You know, when you know it's dirty water, you could spend you, like people get caught up in, OK, it's dirty. You know, it's this, it's that, you know, I could have went. First of all, you know, how many people I heard said that they didn't go fishing because they pulled up on the ramp and it was mud. I was happy for that. <laughs> a lot I of people. I bet you they're all out this weekend. Well, a lot of people but, don't understand about dirty water. It's and, it, and it, it's it is a mind game. Yeah. It, and you have to get over that. You have to kind of figure out that these fish are it's the it's the water's hot. They, they're cold-blooded and they got to eat right and they got high metabolism and yep. crayfish are loaded on the bank right now and what's funny is mike the the only adjustment that i made um was i actually ran and i found some clean water and i ran to the back of the clean water and kind of fished my way out real quick and that's when i had to make an adjustment and i didn't yeah. get bit there and i'm like yeah, i'm not gonna you know waste my time doing this because they were straight yeah. chomping but yeah uh, i mean the the crankbait bite was just unbelievable man um I threw a chatterbait, but my buddy, he, he threw a crankbait all day and just wore them out, wore them out. So, oh, yeah. But we were throwing like 1.5 square bills. Okay. It was a hard knock life, man. I mean, wh wh why not throw the rattle, man? I am I, so glad they came out with that. You know, we, yeah. we were, you know, we were, we were the peons for many years because Bass Pro was the only one that had the rattling bait, you yeah. know, yeah. and uh, we couldn't, you, ha you know, if you wanted a rattling bait, you had to go to the. The bass pro to get it and we because we couldn't sell it yep and um it wasn't available to us it yeah. was their it was their own it was their own deal but then they came out with the hard knock and it's kind of fixed all that for for these types of situations you know where you need that rattle yeah and we also caught them on the spray rattle traps too notice the colors are they're darker they're red they're crawl they're orangey you know a little bit of flash um just stuff that you want in dirty water to george ashbridge look see this is what i'm saying george yeah, ashbridge he was out fishing at goldsboro and he, he said there was nobody around him right and that and that, that's what i'm saying it was it, it was 
the guys who are in the know, now you guys are in the know. And for, for the guys that, who did who weren't, now you are. You're in the know to say, man, I can't wait till the river rises again. Yeah. You know, and, and, and put those fish in that feeding mode. And they just, they absolutely go bananas with that, with that, uh, with that high rising water. And you can't forget about the cotton cordell big O. That's old school right there, bro. OG, baby. That is old OG. school right there. Fire tiger. Yep. And that fire tiger is a uh, fantastic dirty water color. Um, I like it in a two A bomber yeah. also. Um, and, and they got rattles. And they got rattles. They got a great rattle in them. I love that 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 color, that original fire tiger color in that dirty water. Um, very very good. But also those rattle traps. I mean, a lot of people think red rattle traps springtime, but here we go. We're in dirty water. We're fishing crayfish, we're, and we're going to your red rattle traps. This is this, these were ones Corbin caught a lot of fish on. Was uh, these guys right here? Um, he he smashed them real good on the Spro Ruku. You guys know we love the Spro Ruku. They've got all the dirty water uh, reds that are out there. That was a that was a key player also in your day, Huge. catching some big fish. And uh, let's see the nice thing about it is it's power fishing, so you just want to cover water until you hit a school of fish. Yep. And this is a perfect bait to chuck and wine and just burn it, you know. Yep. And covering a lot of water. So. And, and what's funny is I actually I I tried a red eye shad at one point just to try to mix it up. Yeah. After we had already, and they wouldn't touch the red eye shad, they but they would eat the sprout. The sprout. Oh it's yeah. Crazy dude. It's crazy. Well, that's a whole other that's a whole other topic that we're going to talk yep. about. The other thing I that we have to talk about for dirty water fishing. And that's, you know, when you're fishing tubes and some of your plastic baits uh, um, is green pumpkins, a great color all the time. Yeah. But when you get in that dirty water situation, you want to put some dye on the back. The difference that that makes, I talk about this in all my seminars that I do for smallmouth fishing and largemouth fishing in dirty water is the difference to straight green pumpkin. That's a great dirty water color because it's solid and it's dark and it sticks out well. Yeah. But when you put that spike it and you dip that little bit of tail in the back i mean how many days did, did that make a huge difference for you i think it's huge and it's funny you held up the chartreuse but i guarantee you orange is just as good like yeah orange is good orange one. and i don't know mm. if it's because of the like it almost changes the contrast i think it does I, or if it's because of the scent or if it's because that all the crayfish have i mean bright tip pinchers but, yeah i mean either either way it's uh i always it's thought impressive. it was the contrast of yeah. the bait it, it that it was a, it was something that that gave it that that flash kick yep. you know i'm always looking for a flash you know and and in in dirty water i want some kind of uh of, of a flash now what we're what we're seeing as bright green chartreuse who knows what those fish see but they see right. a different contrast and flash and it, it there's been so so many days where we came in and we were like wore out catching fish big pile of tubes in the bottom of my boat from tarrant getting them all tore up and i talked to other guys who were like oh man we we had to catch them on on uh, a chatterbait or a spinnerbait uh with the tube wasn't working well it, you know you look at their their tubes and they didn't have any, any paint on them i've seen that over and over and over again so paint them up stain them up uh stink them up yeah because a lot of these have scent in them absolutely and yeah. i think you're right i think some of it's scent definitely uh, you know in that dirty water so anything that can give you that benefit of the doubt um definitely throw at them and you know you can the nice thing about um you know tube fishing for me in the high water is when they when they go up in those bushes and stuff you can put that tube right in there with that with that spike it and it's yeah. just you know with the mikey head you yeah have the weedless head. well you have to have the weedless this head weedless head scenario guys Very but, what, big but one head. of the things that i noticed too corbin and this is before the water starts to drop now on saturday you were fishing actually a dropping yeah, river so your fish actually pulled out into the current a little bit yeah so you were fishing faster moving water they weren't in the pockets yeah but prior to that if you guys go to the to whatever water you're, you're at and there's current moving there, go into those banks and look at the bushes and the trees that are that are creating eddy pockets, and look at yeah. the color difference of water. Oh, I look thought, at the color difference of water. I bro. thought you were going to say look at the leaves and see. Oh, the brown was up here yeah. and the water's here, so the water's dropping. Well, I thought you were going to go. No, no, that, that, that that's that's a good point. But it, I, I was saying that when the water comes up and it's now up. And you and you go out to the river yep. and you go in there. Look at the difference in color of the main river flow being chocolate milk with all that sediment in it. Yep. And what happens to it when it gets in, in where it slows down yep. and that sediment has a chance to start dropping out. Yep. You have a definite clarity difference. Yeah. So that's why I like to get in those bushes and in those 
those those little pockets in behind the trees that you see along the bank because first of all nobody's going to throw in there with a regular tube no no and a lot of people like you know our viewers may not realize that the bushes the trees if it's high water i mean people's front lawns okay yeah it's still grass okay it's still they still do photosynthesis it still f filters mud and all that stuff yeah. so you know just like in your regular areas whether you have your eelgrass or your milfoil or hydrilla all that stuff it all filters that water so um it's, yeah. it's really important to know that big 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 thing right there yeah. knowing that there is a little clear clear clarity to it on the bank yep. and that will help you uh position those fish will position right in there the bait fish go in there and if and the fish go in there and position in that little bit clearer water um but it's on a rise it's on a rise or a stable high yeah. soon as it drops out we talk about this all the time as soon as it drops out those fish are on the move yes and that's what corbin had on saturday and he ended up catching them in the current yeah it was crazy uh lisa lake fishing club no i did not usually i mean depending on the time of year i would um but I, I made up my mind, and with my buddy, Ben, I'm like, I'm not throwing a spinning rod today. Um, so for me, I just kept a chatterbait, crankbait in my hand, and spinnerbait kept running around. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you don't want to slow down, you don't have to. When you're yeah. catching 200 fish, I'm not going to slow down. No. I'd rather power fish any day of the week. Yeah. Chucking and whining. Yeah. Closing your eyes, just chucking and whining, baby. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's all good stuff uh george yeah rose on sunday evening yep yep got real dirty yeah i watched the mud line come across the river towards my dock <laughs> uh, okay yeah <laughs> and my, of course we had that we had that family cookout and my cousin's like man look at that mud it keeps getting closer and closer well i mean as we were all sitting there having a couple five stars the mud definitely kept creeping its way to the bank and then pretty soon it was under the dock and yeah current seems on. current seams are a huge thing man i, yep. I i'm telling you Current seams, uh, James, absolutely. Uh, he's saying about the current seams. I mean, that's that's just that's that's what you're doing, and 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 and, and, and you know, you know, current. And this this is not just a river 101 thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is lakes. This it is lakes. Everywhere. Anything you have high water is going to be created current, right? And um, you're looking for the current and the and the eddy and the seams of that current. And where that's at and what the water's doing is it rising is it falling is it stable and then you're going to adjust in and out from that but when it drops i'm telling you these fish will and on lakes they move tremendous they'll yes. move big distances overnight yes and and, and it does happen on a river too it, it does it does and one thing i think that you know while we're talking about this i think we need to like differentiate some stuff for our viewers here okay run it Cor corbin okay this is summertime post spawn high water this is not pre-spawn high water this is not cold water temp high water this is warm active time of year high water chewing fish chewing fish yeah. so even at your lakes okay if it floods you know like george tells us a story when he fished the classic on the mississippi river right and he was driving all the way through the woods in the ranger right to go flip that little pond right yeah that he knew because all those fish funneled right there that yeah. was not a cold situation you know so the, the warmer the water okay the more that fish are going to be active which means that for me that is exactly why i am not going to throw a ned rig or a tube because i want to go try to catch as many fish as i can and capitalize on that and figure out where they're at and duplicate a pattern yeah you know whereas like now if i'm now on the flip side okay if i'm fishing a lake where there is no current and it gets high and muddy I mean, I know what I'm putting in my hand. I'm flipping a jig as far back as I can, and I'm not putting it down all day. And I'm going to swim yeah. it, and then I'll throw a chatterbait out along the edge. But if it gets real high and like you, you know, you can skip way back under. That's that's what I'm doing. Oh yeah, you know. But I'm going to look for hard cover. You know, like a rock bottom primarily. Oh yeah. So I get it. But I wanted to kind of like. I guess you say differentiate what we were doing because when they ask about, you know, did I slow down and throw a tube or a Ned rig? No, but that's why, you know, that's why I did it. It's sure. because it's not now, if this would have been spawning time, if this would have been pre-spawn, if this would have been, you know, the water in the sixties or fifties or forties, then absolutely. Yeah. I would have done that. But where the water was like 80, 82, yeah. there's, I mean, I looked up, fish were blowing up on stuff. And yeah. when you caught them, they had, I mean, it just must've been right. a massive feeding frenzy. Right so it was yeah it was it was pretty special and it was all over the river right out here in front of the shop in columbia wrightsville area 
massive catches, yep. massive bite, guys going crazy. I had a guy, it was a neat story. We had a customer come in on uh, yesterday, I think it was, yeah, from California. Yep. And he, and I was like, well, what are you doing here from California? Well, he was here to buy a truck that it was, it, you know, it was the cheapest that he could find, $20,000 cheaper. That's crazy. So, you know, that was worth flying out here buying a truck and then driving it back to California. So he's like, yeah, I'm, I got to drive back. I got to stop in Chicago at my sister's and visit her a little bit, but that's cool. I really want to go smallmouth fishing. Yeah. Uh, I really want to do some fishing. I, I never caught a, a river smallmouth. I said, well, you got the best river in the world right out here. So, right. So we hooked him up with a, with a few tubes and a spinner bait and a chatter bait. And he bought a, a, a one day license. Okay. Drove over to the river. Yeah. And here they were eating a tube. They were, they, were, they were smashing his tube, and he, and he bought a one pack of jig heads. And, uh, of course, it's the Susquehanna River. And if right. you don't know how to fish the Susquehanna River. Did, did he get weedless? Or he, he got weedless, and he, still, oh, boy. He, and he still lost every single one of them because <laughs> he was throwing up river. You know, he's yeah. he throwing up river and getting caught. But he ended up catching, like, 12 fish. That's awesome. And he man. come running back here, and he was like, oh, my gosh, that was great. He said, I need more jig heads. He bought, like, five packs of jig heads. He's like, I'm like, well, you better get rolling, bro. I mean, if you have to be in Chicago tomorrow. Yeah, you better get rolling. He's like, oh, now he said, he said, I got to go over here and catch some more of these smallmouth. It was, it was absolutely awesome. That was from the bank over here in Wrightsville. That's awesome. And he had and he had a uh, nineteen incher. Wow. Yeah, nice fish. So wow. he had a good time. So that's that's kind of stuff you can run into. Uh, the other thing about high dirty water is creek mouse. Yeah. Um, creek mouse play a very big part in um, uh, flushing out the dirt along the bank below the creek. So. Sometimes uh, so it, it does sometimes because well, I mean, Mike, and I know you're probably going to touch on this. If the creek is dirtier than the main river, right? It's probably not a creek mouth worth fishing. No, absolutely not. But if you get a big, massive thunderstorm, it comes through and um, it runs all the way up the river valley and you know, there's going to be a rise two, two to three days afterwards. Those creeks are usually running green. Yep. So you can get on the banks below those creeks and you'll have that little bit of uh, that water doesn't mix. It's amazing how it doesn't mix. It's like oil and it's like oil and water. Exactly. Dude. I mean, it, it's funny. It, it, there'll be a little seam and, and and sometimes it's in the bushes and sometimes it's right on the edge, man. And there'll be this like little, little, like clear little strip. It might only be six inches wide. Yeah. But it, it, you know, again, the bait goes into that. And the fish just line up on the edge of that. And it's like a, it's like a wall almost, like an ambush wall. Yep. They can just stay in that dirty water and then just ambush into the clear. I don't know, but um, so below creeks, um, you can you can have sometimes it's several hundred yards long, other times it's fifty yards long, sometimes it's only a little teeny spot, depending on how much water yep. volume is coming in. But you can always kind of find a few fish around that. So that's a good uh, that's a good thing to remember too. Is a couple of days where it takes many days for a river to run, start running clean yep. a couple of days, these little smaller volume rivers um, and little streams will clear out quicker and you'll have that nice little seam there. So yeah. remember that that's a good well, little, that's a good little tip. Well, I think what makes our river unique, Mike is the amount of creeks that feed it. Okay. I mean, and, and I'm just going to say, look at like the Duncannon area, right? You have all these creeks, but you also have, the west branch that meets the north branch in Sunbury. And sometimes you get that clean strip of water from the west branch and the north branch is, you know, yeah. real muddy. And then you have all these other bigger creeks that push it out. And then all of a sudden you get the Juniata. There's there's all these tributaries yeah. that play a role. And, uh, you know, all those tributaries have different water temperatures coming in and out of them. So that's that's also very important to look at as well. Well, we found um, a couple years ago that we had high water conditions for a long time, yes, like we did. many months so we got on Google Earth and started to poke around yeah. and fly ourselves up through the river valleys looking for not only water and creeks, but stagnant backwaters. But, but even even like, yeah, like 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 places that look like there may be a creek. There was no name of a creek there, but because it was a ravine or a ravine style or, uh, or whatever, we, we, we would go check them out. And some of it was like Corpus said was just backwater areas that would never hold a fish, but because there was high water for such a long time, the fish kind of scattered back in there. So, you know, map study helps you knowing it, knowing your water that you're fishing helps you. There's a lot of little things that'll help you fish in dirty water. Yeah. Um, but, uh, 
yeah so i think we talked about all these trailers and stuff that we like to that we like to use on and, the chatter baits um and you can also use like a crawl this is a good time to throw like a turbo crawls or a ultra vibe speed crawl or the range. yeah um, typically typically speeding for crawl, speaking yeah. yeah z crawl typically speaking for me i like i like to throw you know a a um zayco style bait i like to throw the Kai tech 3.3 and, and you know but i kind of match them up black and blue black and blue you know black and blue black and blue uh you know i kind of try to match them up if i'm doing a, a green pumpkin i might do green pumpkin with a chartreuse i think corbin has one yeah yeah this is a this is a a, a little bit of chartreuse that you can put on the back of a green pumpkin one so there's a lot of different but he throws he throws and this is this is a good idea um it's i mean not a good idea but it's a good bait um the z-man elastec stuff you you know when you're catching like multiple fish like corbin does uh, was doing you're going to go through a lot of baits well the, he, he fished one bait and caught 70 fish on it so um it saves a lot it still has a lot of kick it still has a lot of, you know it's still very vi viable yeah it's a great it's a great trailer yeah. um little but a little bit of pain in the neck to rig up but on the z-man chatterbait head it's made for it exactly it's absolutely made for it so exactly. so um that's a big key uh to that again your reds and your rattle traps and your and your fire tigers make sure you have that in your um kamikaze crawl dale fogel absolutely i was going to grab one of them and bring it up here i kind of i kind of forgot it but a kamikaze crawl and like corbin was saying oh right here corbin that's a good wicked. that's a wicked that's a black crankbait so that's another dirty water thing that's a natural color in dirty waters black sticks out black tubes uh yes. marks mark uh, for you guys that like to throw the, the plastics and bounce the bottom a black tube a green pumpkin tube with a dip tail and chartreuse so these are all things that will really work well for you Corbin, uh, uh, a jig. No, <coughs> um, we jig. go on and on and on, but these yeah. are, I don't want to kind of be, we don't want to be a dead horse. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to make it. So you need so many baits. I always like to keep it simple, you know? <coughs> and one of the, one of the, you know, one of the, one of my things is like, and what I was trying to get at was two, three color spinner baits, two colors of chatter baits. This is dirty water talking here um and two colors of crankbaits um in both the rattle traps and a regular crankbait and you and you got it covered yeah you know and then your green pumpkin tube your black tube yep. your black ned 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 head and a green pumpkin ned head and you and you and you i'm telling you it you can catch on something right there you will catch fish on it yes and yep. uh i was talking to another guy who was out fishing and he was catching them on a buzz bait I believe that a, a, a squeaky buzz bait. Yeah. Um, he came in and bought some more of them. It was the um, Picasso squeaky rivet. Squeaky yeah. rivet. Yeah. And he came in and bought some more. And he said, uh, I found a little clear spot on, uh, on this bank. And he was throwing a buzz bait. And you, because you said that you had the fish blowing up. Yeah. And he saw that too. And he instantly went to a buzz bait and he smashed them. Uh, three, three feet out from the bank, it was chocolate milk. He was getting like five or six turns out of his thing and they were just smashing it right on the bank and he, yeah. he, he caught so there's you know i i tried that's to, that's, that's, that's crazy i tried the bone shower blow and they didn't eat it that's, the, it, that's yeah. the only thing i had on my deck that oh, i really had on yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, question george ashbridge is the diesel minnow better upside down or the chatter wagon uh hook it the right way just hook it the right way you don't, yeah you don't have to rig it upside down just hook boot, it regularly. boot foot down yep boot foot down get better kick that way yep Yep. I don't know. I think uh, you can do one of the unique ways of of rigging for, on a chatterbait is the um, um, Mikey menace grub. Menace, yeah. So we'll we'll not only fish the menace grub where it kicks straight up and down this way, but we'll a lot of times on a chatterbait we'll turn it this way, and you get that nice swimming effect on the legs this way. So. Yeah, I mean, you can always experiment with flip flopping all your baits, and you get different profiles that way too. So um, that's pretty cool. That's that's something definitely to check out there. How about all the guys that were in today that were talking about they smashed them on the river on the rage bug? Remember that? They're oh like, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just, just something else. Big flappy moving craw crawfish style bait, but they were eating it, man. Yeah. Well, this year the crayfish bolt is unbelievable. There's 20 billion crayfish in like one square feet. Oh yeah, and I love it they're shallow yeah <laughs> yeah yeah eating it yep 
Um, so, all right. So I got that covered. Uh, got everything covered on that dirty water stuff, Corbin? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, think we, so. I think we got it pretty I, I good. I think so. I mean, do we want to open up? Does anybody have any questions or, you know? Yeah, if you have any questions, throw them in there. We'll, we'll answer them as we go along here uh, for sure. Um, but I do have one thing I got to do before we get off here, and that's uh, go over the fa uh, fantasy fishing. Fantasy fishing. And um, it was the final tournament, so fantasy fishing is now over. And um, our winner. Wait, are you talking about for the year or the week? The, the year. Well, that's going to be this guy. Yeah. W wiggle uh, fart. Yeah, wiggle fart. M. Cox. He uh, he won the whole thing. Um, and then Moosehead721 was in second. Pretty close. Um, Brett Potter won uh, the um, tournament at the, uh, St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence. Okay. Yeah. So Brett Potter won that. And uh, thanks everybody for playing along. I know everybody's commenting on not getting their prizes yet. You're going to get your prizes. I promise you. You're going to get your prizes. It's been very difficult. Uh, you know getting this stuff and uh but we're we're gonna hook you up i mean it's it, it, it's we're gonna hook all you guys up that's, that's what we do we hook you up turn the, you know it, it's now over so we're gonna get this stuff together we got well jordan's making contacts down there and trying to get this stuff uh um you know especially yeah. especially some of the first couple week prizes that we had some problems with getting i mean you just can't get if you don't have it you don't have it right but it's a prize and you're gonna get it I promise yeah love you guys calm yeah. down yeah um thanks for playing along it was fun absolutely it was a good time it was it was uh, it was my first experience at uh fantasy fishing i suck at it um but that's all right i i uh you know it's the way it is yeah you see that question mikey why do you think red is so we got a question out here mm -hmm. and uh what is it? The question is, why do you think red is so good in dirty water when the scientists say it's the first color to disappear? <laughs> That's a good question. I have my thought. Go ahead. You're you up, Mikey. No, no, you're up. Go ahead. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I don't want to start it because every time I say something, you totally counter no, 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 you no, counter, no, no. you counter no. uh you, no. counter, uh, you no. counteract me and you and no. you attack me. Oh my god. I feel physically attacked. I always do. Every time I talk to you, I'm, Mike, I feel like I'm Mike, physically attacked. This is my thought, right? I got feelings, Corbin. Me too, man. Uh, no heart, though. <laughs> red, right? Let's talk about red. Red. Red disappears, right? That's why they got Cajun line, right? You know? Right. But guess what doesn't disappear in a red bait? Mm. Vibration. Mm. So, like, your fire crawl chatterbait, even if that skirt disappears or whatever, whatever the myth they want to say is, a lot of times you're, you know, like a lot of our reds have orange in them. They have chartreuse in them. They have black in them. They have, you know, it's not very rarely do you see just a red crankbait. Like, and I mean, bright fire engine red with nothing in it. That's, that's my thought is, um, I mean, I, I think yeah. it's because of that. So. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I first of all, uh, red does not disappear. That's bullshit. Hey. Just so you know, I, I agree. It doesn't. I agree. Sorry about the curse words. Uh, I think it does disappear in some spectrum of the water in 500 to 600 feet or whatever. Okay. So it's some spectrum. It disappears. The red Cajun line thing was a marketing <laughs> uh, genius from somebody who uh said it disappeared and because it, 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 it the red does disappear somewhere but i think yeah. it's in deep blue ocean somewhere in the depths of hell somewhere that disappears right it it doesn't disappear in shallow water it's a different flash i don't think they see red i don't think they see those i don't think they see colors i think it's a different brightness of the of a flash or like something a, like a tint yeah thing. i yeah. think it's something like yeah. that I mean, whether whether you know because red and mud reacts right or something i don't know but uh, unless somebody can prove me different with red disappearing in water, I would love to hear it because I am under, uh, I just, I'm telling you, it's, it, to me, it's the biggest falsy that's ever been said in, in, in fishing that red, red disappears. Did you say Fauci? Fauci? 
Yeah, the biggest Fauci. Fa- oh, I thought you said the biggest Fauci in fishing. I, I mean, I, I wasn't going to go there, but I, I thought you. I thought you just brought up the, uh, the, the Fauci man. And no, right, I, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't bring anything up political. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, to me, I think I think it's a silhouette. I think it's a contrast, but I also think it's like a vibration type thing too. Yeah. So yeah, it is. I think so. I think vibration. Well, it does. <laughs> Todd says Google says it totally disappears by twenty feet. Okay. Well, we ain't fishing twenty feet of water. Nope. I, I I just I don't believe I I just don't believe that it uh, that it does in fish the fish see it differently you know there's so many things in fishing that I learned over the years like like one of them Todd is uh, um, you know the red hook in the middle of the crankbait you know they they put yes. they put the yes. red number four in the middle of the deep diving crankbait because yes. they want to they want fish to zero in on the front hook not the back hook yep and that it it helps zero in zero the fish zero in and that's that's coming from these guys that are like that's what they do. They do it 24 yeah. seven on the water and they, and they, so they see this stuff happening. I don't know. Um, that's just me. I, I Google know. says Google's right all the time. Well, too. I mean, dude, did you watch the interweb? What, my, my question is what call, you know, what's red in the water what? blood. Yeah. Blood doesn't disappear. Cause that brings in jaws, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying like, I, I don't know. We, we'd have to, yeah. we'd have to do some scientific science. blood red. I don't know. Red is a hue in a certain depth of water. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, Robert. I I I believe I believe that. But yeah. I I just think for for shallow water fishermen like we are, you know, um, I I I just think that it's a, it's and whether it's they're seeing red or they're seeing whatever, it's some kind of different flash that goes well in that type of water color. Well, and a lot of the reds that we have, like the ones I showed up, are multiple. Actually, like there's a little bit of red, there's orange, there's like some gold in there, some yeah. flash. So that's why I said it's not like a solid red. You, yeah. you got you got contrast within that big silhouette going on there. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Uh, it's a kind of a neat question because you know it's we, very interesting. It's uh, why why is it? I mean, you know, yeah. it's just it is what it is. It works and and it doesn't always work in dirty water. Mm. But there's times where it's like the the bomb. I mean, and, and why is why is it that red is so prolific in the spring, and that nobody else throws it any other time of the year, unless, unless it's dirty water? Yeah, you know. So I don't know. It's uh, it's good, 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 good question, good discussion, and uh, we ain't even Google's never that. wrong. Right, right. Todd Langle. Right. You're the man, though, bro. We love you. Yes. Uh, don't take any of this stuff personally, people. We're just having fun. Absolutely. It's all like knowledge that we're trying to share the best we know how to do it. And, uh, you know me, I'm always a happy go lucky dude. Absolutely. I get mad at Corbin though sometimes. Yeah. Mike, I mean, that's okay. <laughs> it's all good. I'm all good. All right. Well, it's, uh, getting late in the show. Uh, I think I covered everything next week. We're going to be back with, um, the G man, uh, the G man's going to be here. I'm sure it's going to be a, tackle talk fiasco you know he's going to fill us in on some cool stories um of course we're going to bring another another topic of discussion on fishing some type of fishing i thought the dirty water was a good one this week because that's what we're in we and try to always talk about something that's something that's relevant relevant to and current and you yeah know. and and we, i kind of i might have an idea for next week let's see what yeah we, I, we ain't gonna announce yet but I'm, I'm guessing next week's gonna be a lot of new tackle talking we gotta th- we gotta get the iCast. How do you down. think we did without the big man? I think that's for the viewers to say. Yeah, I think we did okay without the big man. I mean, and and Wink. I mean, you know, he he and and Wink. Nick, you're fired. The camera was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we just found out that we don't need you. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> but good luck on Champlain. But good luck on Champlain. I, I hope your fish don't move. <laughs> yeah. No, we need Nick. We need Nick all the time. Yeah. Nick Nick has. Uh, is a great insight that we love to love to hear. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So uh, um, and George always brings his massive amounts of knowledge. Oh, to he, the show. I mean, next week. Don't don't. I I, I know he's not watching this because he's partying right now right. with the Saint Croix people. Next week. I think. I mean, we're we're just gonna have to give George. Well, here's here's the deal. Stage. Here's the deal with this partying thing. He, uh, about eight years ago. I think it was the first year that they had ICAST in Florida. Yeah. St. Croix invited me and George out for dinner. Okay. And we were the only two dealers in the whole deal. So they had they had 25 
factory people and me and George. Wow. And they took us to a place called the house of a thousand beers. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that was a mistake. How many did you get through? Uh, well, me and George, uh, well, the next day, and, and, and they, 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 talk, they talk about this all the time. St. Like, Croix, Saint Croix ha has talked about this event for every time we see them, every year, they all come running and they, they're like, oh my God, you remember the, the House of a Thousand Beers? And, yeah. and it was such an epic night. And a lot of those guys still don't drink to this day because of it. Oh God. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. Wow. And um, so I don't know if they forgot about it because we missed last year. Yeah. That they're taking George out to dinner tonight. Oh gosh! To Wait. the Corona Cigar Bar. And doesn't he fly home tomorrow? No, like, he, he he flies home Friday night. Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah. So he'll be all right. Is I cast over tomorrow? Yeah, I'm not worried about George. I'm worried about Saint Croix people. Uh, I'm not worried about George or myself. I, we all we weren't worried about me and him. Right. We're worried. We're we're worried. I'm worried right now about the Saint Croix people. <laughs> if whether well, or not they're even going to make rods anymore after this. Oh gosh. It's that bad, huh? Wow. It was epic. It was epic, and it's always going to be epic with the St. Croix guys. Yeah. Um, you know, so but I think uh yeah, George is eating well down there. He's 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 at he's at the, the best places and it's pretty neat. So um anyway, thank you everybody yes. for uh stopping in once again. I love we love doing these shows. We love that you guys like yep. like to watch them. We get a lot of great, great comments um about the show, and we're, we're we we and we genuinely love to do this so fun it's, it's it's a lot of fun it's it's everything about it we don't look at this as work or anything we just have fun with yeah. it and 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 we like to share our fishing knowledge that and and learn every day and we learn every day we want you guys to learn every day and if you're not learning you, you know you're not growing better with your fishing yeah. so you know we're here to help you catch more fish that all that means is we're learning together we like to talk about it. I listen to all my customers all the time and anything that I don't know about, I, I listen to them dil diligently yep. and I learn everything, something every day. So it's really great to, to do this. And, uh, Joe, Joe Gallo, I, I know you're going to, Hey, Joe, right here, baby, right there, baby. He had to have the, he had to have it. So that was, uh, that's great. I mean, that, the hat is hot. It's, it's on fire. It's on fire. I'm telling you. So you got to have it, Mike. How do I put this quote up on the screen? What do you got here? This this might be uh, the biggest compliment. It's click that, on the that, show that you guys don't. No, no, I, I don't want to. Oh, okay, but go ahead, post it. All right. The best thing to come out of COVID is tackle shop live. <laughs> well, I would appreciate that, Mark. It, I mean, it, it, that's it, really what. That's from, really how it was. That's it awesome. was really how it was born. Was it was a COVID thing, and 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 a lot of people we couldn't we couldn't. So we started out hacky. We don't. You, yeah. The early days were. We're, we're pretty cool and, and we loved it and we're still we're still loving it and everything's fun mark you've been with us since day one thank you so much buddy um met a lot of people made a lot of friends making a lot of friends every week uh but as always thank you so much um and we'll see you next time on another edition of tackle shop live sunny day a right there you took my breath away a young and pretty you was it just a dream the next day you called me up you told me i'm your little buttercup you came over and you fell into my arms well i know what i feel please tell me your love is real you make this my way to think of you if i